I feel like it would have to be for Trump. It would have to be like a combination of him and Godzilla. So it could China, be like Trump China, Zilla. China, yeah. China, China. Against China. some sort of crazy like Mecha King Jong Un. Kim Kong Un. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big big monkey Kim. Three hundred foot robot Donald Trump shoots there, fucking lasers out of his There you eyes. go, Congress. We just figured that out. <laughs> you push that through. Make it happen. Winner, winner take all. Well, maybe not. That sounds. Yeah, that sounds terrible. All right, guys, welcome back to another Last Call podcast. My name is Mikey T, joined as always by Tristan. T Money in the His House! <laughs> it's, it's so great that that is a nickname that you've used before. <laughs> Sorry, I just say hello every week. I just thought I'd change it up a little bit, you know? <laughs> that is quite. Dive right in, change that shit. There we go. Uh, I can't do that every week, though. We it's have, it's we, too yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bit much. Uh, this week we have uh, Fearish Reader. Big Asian Baby J is back in the building. Welcome oh, back. Is this number two or three? I think it's the third one, right? It's number three. Number three. Oh, oh. that's right, because you're on... I did a solo dolo. You're and on solo, and then you brought in... Had my um, Nubian big, roommate. Big Willie. Right. Big Willie. No, but this is four, isn't it? He did solo... No, no, no. No, I didn't came... make it with Will. That's right. Uh, Kyle came on with Will. Oh, that's right. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Welcome back to the fray. The newly like better lit fray. The yeah. newly unbelievable. Stare right bright, into the sun. <laughs> make purple blobs in my vision. Like, God, it's terrible. I, w- I, w- I want to figure out how to, like, we should take some video from, like, an iPhone or something like that just so they can see what we're looking at at this point. I, I will do that it right is now. Such a ri- <laughs> it is such a ridiculously lit thing at Yo, this, this point. Yo, this shit is lit. <laughs> I mean that literally. <laughs> Drugs not involved. <laughs> but while you're staring at our incredibly uh, well lit studio basement here, what's should... Uncle Kim doing, Jay? Tell us what's going on over there. Oh, what Jesus the fuck? Christ. I know you got like a direct line. Like you're on some sort of like. I mean, technically, technically, family bloodline is war traders to North Korea. It's cool. Hey, Gran- grandfather was actually North Korean. I'm not here to judge. Hey, it's cool. I'm not about that. Like communist life. Not my kind of thing. <laughs> Ain't about that life. No, de- definitely not about it. You seen pictures of that place, man? It's yeah, like, it looks like it sucks. It looks worse than Eastern Europe. <laughs> What's worse than Eastern Europe? <laughs> that should North be Korea. their, uh, their like, uh, tourism video. It's like We're- North Korea. It looks like it sucks. <laughs> We can we can make that. We get this, I, this. Oh, that's a photo. That won't help much. It would, Continue. I'm gonna go ahead and get a video of this. My uh, um, my favorite thing that they do over there is like building the fake storefronts. Oh, like there's all those like like it, they they showed it in uh, what was that what was that movie? The interview where he like goes to the grocery store and it ends three feet in and it's just like a painting of a grocery <laughs> store and like three fake oranges. And like, that was really funny. And then you look into it. It's like, no, nope, that's like, real. No, that's actually, re- <laughs> that's real. That's what it's like over there. I like, I like the haircut regulations. There's literally like only three haircuts that you're allowed to have over there. Oh it? really? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can, you can have like his haircut and like two other like ultra basic haircuts. That doesn't sound so bad to me. Tell me what to do with my hair. I'm I'm kind of okay with that. Like I don't I don't want to make the decision. I mean, but when one of the options that you have to choose from is his haircut, he <laughs> does literally have like dick hair. Yeah, like, it's he's, almost he's a penis head. he looks like a penis. Yeah, legit penis. So head. yeah, I guess if that's one of or three, a but... variety, I'd say. It's... Yeah, he's, he's, he's <laughs> a bit of a water penis. Yeah, he's, you know, just face into neck, shoulders, just like straight down. And just, yeah, that bulging hair up top just completes the illusion. Great leader, Chode. <laughs> I guess, I mean, shitty hair is common amongst all leaders, though. Do you think uh, it'll be like... Except for, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, is it Trudeau in Canada? Uh, that might, J- Justin? I think that's the is yeah, it Justin? I think so. He's, he's, he's a handsome motherfucker. He's got it going on. And the French PM, he's a good-looking guy, too. Like... I think it's yeah, but just I mean, the, the French guys don't count. They just sit over there all the time, like ha, 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 the, we are the French. We are okay. Don't that fuck is with racist, us. and we don't support that here on Last Call Pot. Just kidding. I Strap say, in. Terrible <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> I'm, I mean, they really I'm not don't delusional. Do I know the kinds of things I say. Obama just had like a just like a black guy haircut. Like he didn't do anything unique with it. I mean, he was always like put together well, just but he didn't. Cut. 
you know, that'd have been cool if he'd done the uh, the high top fade with like the line cut into oh, it like, though, like during his like, last term. <laughs> go for the full like kitten play type. Of. Oh, that'd be that'd be amazing. That's how he and Biden should have like walked off the la- their last time on stage. Do the the dance from uh, House Party. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fantastic. Get off Air Force One, hail to the chief plays, burn, 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 record scratch. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, their foots are linked up doing the dance. Yeah. That would have been fantastic. That's the only part of that movie I've seen. I imagine um, that's how most people are. Clinton had old guy southern hair. And then all the rest of them before that just had like that old guy southern hair, just like part on the left to the right, like. Well, that's 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 that. I'm going into politics haircut. That's true. It's like a three hundred dollar haircut too. For but no reason. Just a terrible generic haircut. But uh, 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 Uncle Kim, so he's going a little nuts over there. So you are you you have some North Korean in you. I'm technically half North Korean. Half, half North Korean. Korean. Oh, my Korean side, should I say. Half is North, half is South. So do you have family over in South Korea right now, or is everybody over here at this point? I mean, I have family in South Korea. I don't believe there's any remaining family in North Korea. Right, 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 right. Like, you probably got a little, they, little half-brother running well, around or something. If they were there, they would have been dead by now. Yeah, okay. But you have family in South Korea. Yeah, definitely. So that's definitely concerning because the... I mean, it's alerting because they could easily be put underwater very quickly. Right, right. I mean, the the concern is that, like... I mean, know, he could sink them with great ease. Uncle, Uncle, D- Uncle Donald is going to talk too much shit and they're going to lob a warhead over the border and make soul glow in the dark. Can't somebody just put fucking... What's his name? Kim, jo- Kim Jong-un on Twitter and then he and Donald can just battle it out. Uh, you know, I would pay to see that they're gonna slide into each other's DMs. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get on board with the uh, um, the robot jock school of of politics. Let's just let the two of them fight it out in in giant robots, like directly. Put each one of them in a giant robot resembling themselves, and let them duke it out in in a desert somewhere. If it resembled themselves, that would be amazing, right? I feel like it would have to be for Trump. It would have to be like a combination of him and Godzilla. So it could be like Trumpzilla. Yeah. Against some sort of crazy like Mecca Kim Jong Un. Kim, Kim Kong Un. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big big monkey Kim. Three hundred foot robot Donald Trump shoots there, fucking lasers out of it. There eyes. you go, Congress. We just figured that out. <laughs> you push that through. Make it happen. <laughs> winner winner take all. Well, maybe not. That sounds. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Yeah. Because then we would all have his haircut. <laughs> Oh man, what if the loser has to have the other's haircut? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> they're they're equally shitty. I was just thinking like we would expect Kim Jong Kim Kim Jong Un now or Eel. It's Un now. Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un. Yeah. I we would expect Kim Jong Un to show up in like the shittiest like North Korean like fake robot. It's just got a sticker oh, yeah. over it where it's like. You see the Soviet logo. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I assume the Chinese would slip him like a super badass one, like at the last minute. No, it would just actually be like four hundred Chinese people like linked together, four, like <laughs> four hundred four hundred North Koreans duct yeah. together, duct duct taped together at the arms and wrists. Yeah. That's that's how that's I how mean, it I works. I could see him operating that way, <laughs> he, like he like a Morty shield. Oh, <laughs> Oper- he'd, he'd just call it Operation Human Shield in Korean in some some way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, no, that's, like, that's just hide behind the other ones. Ooh. It's cool. Oh, yeah. Forgot Flip the clock. The, 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 sand, the, the sands of time. We do. I don't know. We need to like put together some sort of reminder for ourselves. We always forget that it's always ten minutes late. Meh. Almost exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you like? Are you concerned on a day to day basis? Are you like? Are you following like? The news on Korean Twitter or whatever, like <laughs> <laughs> Korean Twitter. Well, I mean, there's a black Twitter, right? I assume there's a Korean Twitter there's a and black maybe. Twitter. Well, I mean, it's not like a separate, like it's not a separate app. Like, oh, <laughs> you mean like how there was? <laughs> <laughs> they probably wouldn't get away with that one. <laughs> probably be. Sure. That is something Twitter would do these days, just to try and get more followers. But yeah, there's like a black Twitter. I assume there's like Korean Twitter. I mean, or, like I'm sure there is. I'm not real big into like trying to stay on twitter for anything but i i I will say this like i've been watching what's kind of going on and while i kind of completely agree with the idea that we should probably do something about this guy 
I also realized there are personal ramifications that could happen to me if we go to war with North Korea. Which is why I ask. I mean, you're in a rare, you're in a rare circumstance. Like a bunch of, a lot of Americans chanting for blood. They're like, let's just kick this guy's ass. Like they've got nothing in the American military. We could wipe that place off the map in a week, even if it's a year and a trillion dollars. We would win that war it, pretty easily. But who wouldn't win that unless China decided to fight? But but who wouldn't? Who definitely would lose is the South Koreans. They would take. They would take the brunt of it. There would be a hard L at the homeland. And, like, I hate to say it this way, but regardless of what anybody wants to say when there is a war against a foreign country with the U.S., people that look like they're from that country typically have some sort of suffering along the way. It's just the way it is. Yeah. I I mean, I'm not going to fucking candy coat it. Like, think about it. Last time we were at war with, with Asian people, my my family would have been building railroads across America. Yeah. Like that's what it boils down to. And it wasn't even that long ago. I mean, no. you know, world world war two, like, you know, the Japanese were put into fucking internment camps. Like I'm not saying that's coming, but I also know how dumb and fucking news retarded America is where they'll just watch some stupid 10 second clip and buy it as, as just complete that's... truth and turn around and look at me being Asian and be like, you fucking chink. And I'm going to be like, whoa, bro. First of all, I'm Korean, so call me a gook. Get it right if you're going to be racist. <laughs> yeah, come on. Oh, Two. really? Are Koreans? Are, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that that was an actual, like, Koreans I knew the Vietnam. Gooks. I knew the Vietnamese were, but Koreans are lumped in there as well? They are considered gooks. In, in Today I learned. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know, I, I'm more concerned about, like, and it's terrible to say it this way too, but it's normally some dumbass, ignorant white dude that goes yeah. off on whatever race it is that we're in war with. So yep. if we go to war with North Korea, I'm more concerned about things that could be con- could be said to my kids, things that could be said to my family, things that could be said to me that could end up leading to physical altercations that are just complete bullshit and not necessary. Yeah, I I don't I don't disagree with you. It's there's quite a bit of bullshit flying around, just in general. I mean, every, I always say it this way, man. Both sides fling bullshit. What the media flings us is bullshit. We see, like, this much of everything. Well, that That's what, when you said uh, the whole uh, people uh, sharing, like, dumb bullshit stuff on uh, fake news, if it were. I saw somebody share something about uh, Maryland uh, increasing the <clears throat> the penalties for if you have tint or a modified exhaust or modified, you know, you saw it on there. Yeah. Hmm. And you you click on the link, and at the very top, it says, prank. (laughs) Like, the first bit of text says it's a prank. And then down below, it gives you an option to make your own prank page. Uh... And I, I clicked, I was like, huh, I wonder what's going on. I click it. Go to it. I was like, it's a fucking prank. I go back to the comment section. Like, six people are like, man, that's fucking bullshit. I was like... Can any of you motherfuckers read? <laughs> it said like before you get to anything of substance, it had like a like a fake article typed out or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like a little blurb or whatever. But it's I mean, the first words say it's a prank. And if you go any farther past it, it lets you make your own. So I made my own that said uh illiteracy rates skyrocket in Ellicott City. <laughs> and then the text of the uh article that I wrote was you are all idiots, heart Mikey T. <laughs> Fucking morons. And it's like, if that can get through, think about the stuff that is shared as legitimate news. And to anyone with a brain, it's obviously not yeah. real. But like I always say, think of the how dumb the average person you see. And 50% of the people out there are dumber than that person. <laughs> Every day I see something that is that is shared in all earnesty that comes off of like, you know, an onion or something equivalent. Everybody knows the onion, right? But there's 50 sites just like the onion that people don't get are, are parody or uh, um, uh, well, the, satire, right? Like, and they just, they don't fucking get it. The parody one. I mean, I understand if you don't know what onion is or whatever, but the all the ones that they aren't. They aren't. It isn't supposed to be parody. It's just they're taking one sliver of truth and and boiling it down to its essence and just making up the rest. 
Yeah. To just make up a bunch of bullshit. That's the stuff that scares get me. Get those clicks. Yeah, because it's it's all clickbait bullshit. Make that ad revenue. Think about think about those fake celebrity death ones. Those things spread like wildfire through the internet. That's true. You know That's what I mean? true. And it's, it's people not reading what it actually says and just clicking something and seeing a headline that says like, I don't know, George Michael died, and then they're like, Oh my God, he's dead, and then it it just runs. And it's not you see it two or three times. You can scroll a whole fucking like ten fingers worth of pages, and it's like thirty five times. And you're like, yeah, this shit is not real. Wait, is George Michael dead or not dead? He's really yeah, he's dead, dead, right? Okay, just, all right. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I thought he did that. <laughs> I was just trying to. Did I get the had? Name of a celebrity <laughs> that popped in my head for some unknown homosexual somebody, reason. Somebody, it's like every year there's news that come out that they die, and I forget, I forget who that is. I'm just yeah. upset every time that I hear that uh, Justin Bieber is still alive. Oh man, he's he's never gonna die. That's he's gonna die long after you. He's like the, he's gonna outlive us all. The fucking pop shit music Highlander. <laughs> I feel like he's eventually gonna replace Ellen. Like he's just gonna get so drugged out and like crackhead looking that he's gonna look even. He already looks like they Ellen get if you closer look at together him. every yeah, year. I was wondering saying, what the looking they're working. Was. To, I was like, oh I don't yeah, no, they look like really. Her. They look really similar, and every year they look more and more like one another. It's because he's blessed in drugs, and she's like taking miracle drugs to try and look younger, and they're forming and morphing into one person. Oh, he's the kind of guy who's gonna start like you know having young people kidnapped and get their blood transfused into him when he gets older, like some sort of pop culture vampire. I feel like he's going to have one of those like Macaulay Culkin-esque fall from graces eventually. Man, I, I hope so. I would have called that like seven years ago, but like, I mean, it dude's is getting worse steady worse. crushing it. Is he like, I kind of feel like he got his shit together. Like he went through a bad period for like I don't know, two or three years where he was, you know, getting DUIs and wrecking Ferraris and stuff. But, like, he seems to have calmed down a little bit. Not that I'm, you know, I mean, got my finger on the Justin you're, Bieber you're a Justin believer. Bieber bolt. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Tristan's a believer. Yeah, I guess I don't really know shit about Justin Bieber. I just don't. Money, the I, mad believer. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know my forum name? Um, I just don't hear much about him anymore. I kind of assume he kind of got his shit together. Like, he shows up with a rapper at a basketball game every once in a while. But, like, I don't really. He's, like, in a closet, like. Banging dope all night long. That's, that's my imagination. I don't know. They, had, they showed uh, clips of him looking really disappointed after the first Cap series. So that was kind of cool. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, because he's Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, he's alive. All of our pop culture and wrestling is imported. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Canada provides all of our, like, a good, a good chunk of our actors, lots of musical artists. And what? seriously, like seventy five percent of professional wrestlers. <laughs> but didn't they give us Nickelback? Like they fuck fuck you for giving us Nickelback. Yeah, they they slipped that one in. I mean, they were like, we're gonna give you all this awesome stuff, but you have to take Nickelback. Couple couple of decades worth of amazing celebrities. There, like, I didn't say uh, they gave us all that much good music. I'm oh, saying no, a the lot music's of it. Terrible. They've got all the, they've they. I mean, I'd have to look up a list. There's a lot of good actors are out of Canada. Um, a lot of good comedians too. Um. But, uh, and a lot of movies are filmed there now. Like, cause it's so, really? so expensive to film in California now that a lot of film companies, this has been since the 90s, uh, have fled up to Vancouver where they give them tax incentives and stuff like that. Um, everything you see that's like filmed, like in the woods, um, that's all done up in Vancouver. Um, you know, all those like X Men and Wolverine movies that all take place in these big wooded areas, that's all Vancouver and stuff like that. <laughs> For once it was in the um, proper location. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, my uncle used to be in the industry up there and like, yeah, it's just tons of movies filmed up there and like Georgia too. That's where they film a lot of movies now. Which I Seems don't like a lot know. of TVs done there too. Yeah. 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 Cause like, I, I guess the, the walking dead and all that is pretty much everything AMC is shot in Georgia all the time. Yeah. Cause I guess the, the local government gives them tax incentives to shoot there and then just make it cheap as opposed to LA, which butt fucks everybody who, who wants to point a camera somewhere. So they're, they're fleeing from there. So back to the subject at hand. I'm just curious. As I recall, you may have dropped a vote for for President Trump somewhere along the way, <laughs> who some might say may be uh, escalating the situation. Uh, that's good stuff. I'm just curious because you have an inside track and a personal risk in this situation. Do you have a solution that you would like to see? 
I mean, aside from the giant robots. I mean, well, I mean, I think Trump, we kind of nailed it there. I mean, Trumpzilla to me seems like the way to go. But I mean, it, it's 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 a slippery slope, man. Because there's there's two things that I'm pretty confident of that could come of us fucking with him that I'm not really trying to see the result of. One is we piss off China. Two is we piss off Russia. Because yep. there's one constant. You can't fight in Russia. Nope. You'll just die. You you won't get to them. You'll die. It's been proven over time. So that means we're going to have to fight. They're going to fight us here if they get mad. And that's not good for America. I, I, I don't want to see that. Because, again, that's sketchy. They got a lot of people, too. It's not like they're... Iraq they or something. They have that many people? I mean, at this, I mean, at have this a lot point of people. in American history, no one's really coming here to fight us. That's just not feasible where but, we are in the world stage and everything. Um, but it's, like I'm saying, if we go to war, we need to be able to go in at people. And if they're pissed off at us, they're either going to bomb us or they're going to try and attack, do some crazy shit. Not necessarily, I'm saying, I'm not saying a war here like, like civil war, hand-to-hand combat yeah, with muskets and shitter ground. guns. I'm talking about... I mean, did a- Asian people are fucking crazy, and Russian people are Asian too. They'll fly over here and blow some shit up. I never really thought it like that. Uh, they are. They are technically Asian. Technically, they are. I mean, they'll fly over here and blow some shit up. And if we piss off China, China literally could just send everybody from there here, and we'd be fucked. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> in theory, but I mean, they're they're not gonna fucking swim, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> you maybe need some boats to do that. And like, I'm just, you can't just like... park a cruise ship off of Los Angeles and be like, everybody off, get whoever you see. I'm just used to the logic of us being like, hey, we're America, we are fucking way bigger than all of you, and we can just destroy you. You know what I mean? Fuck because yeah. we do invade and fight like that. We do. So much smaller, poorer countries than us. <laughs> We're really good. So if we mediocre go, at fighting. If we go with them, we gotta be careful. And again, like I said, I'm not really worried about about North Korea and Kim Jong un because again, like we've all said, we'll go in there and just destroy real quick. It'd be it'd be pretty pretty easy if he doesn't have backup from either one of those two countries. So you wanna see a, a, a de escalation. You wanna see Uncle Trump be like, you know what? Pump the brakes a little bit. We, we were all we were all drunk last night. We were, you know, we said some things we didn't mean. Let's just let's relax. Maybe talk. It's you not know. so much that I need to see that from him. I'm okay with him kind of prodding North Korea because I, all right, I still stick with my idea that I think Trump is pulling off one of the greatest troll jobs ever in the history of America. And if you think about it. Who better to troll and talk shit to North Korea into him, into making Un make some foolish fucking mistake where he just completely looks like a retard and loses all support from China or Russia? <laughs> Be- because if he if he can fuck with him to a point where Un just completely colossally embarrasses himself, then we have a better chance of going in there and screwing shit up without having to worry about them coming at us. Like, we need him to fuck up because he'll... If we keep prodding Un and Un decides to attack South Korea, the Chinese aren't going to back him up. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So if we get him to attack them first by Trump trolling him on Twitter, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like, think I about get it, it from the aspect. I get like, it. There are things that he's doing governmentally that it's pissing off Un, but he's also, they're like, yo, he needs to stop talking on Twitter about us or we're going to blow shit up. But I'm a little worried that, that the result of that trolling won't be some some uh, negatively worded Facebook post. I'm a little worried that it's going to turn soul into a radioactive hole in the ground. It, could it, like, could. it could. But again, I feel like the only way we can get rid of him is by possibly prodding him into doing something dumb. Just let him, okay. All right. Yeah, I, fair enough. I mean, it's So you're okay. You're you're behind the Twitter trolling policy. I mean, my thing is is that with internet shit, like I laugh at all that stuff. Like, all right. Perfect example with that. Mikey messaged me the other day and he's like, "Yo, who is this guy? Can I like is he your good friend? Can I go in on him?" <laughs> Fucking have at it. Have at it. Because I do what I call third-party trolling. <laughs> I will say something also called the coward's troll. <laughs> yeah. I will say something that's just so out there that may be partially something I believe, maybe not, just to get somebody who's an extreme left or rightist to say something. 
and they'll say something and I'll say one comment to pad their ego. It'll be one thing, which I'm sure you saw it. I was like, yeah, man, I agree with you. Which as I was typing it, I was fucking laughing. I did not say another word on the entire thing that wound up getting to like 85 comments of just just sheer trolling for me because I was like, yeah, I said one thing to start this entire thing. And there's people going at it over just just I ridiculousness. Yeah, you destroyed him. And, and my, it was fucking hilarious to me because I'm reading all this and I'm like, I didn't have to do anything. Mikey's over there aroused just thinking about it. <laughs> God, I had, I had two of those situations this past week where one was this. That one was the uh, the vaccine yeah. debate. Mm. And I had another one with a guy that randomly. So uh, a friend of mine posted like a Bible quote and I posted a random Bible quote out of context that sounded really goofy and just was like, <laughs> religion is silly and just left it at that. Okay. And then this other person was like, you just don't understand his capital, Got his it. word and his truth and all this stuff. I was like, or I was just making a joke, but you know, whatever suits your fancy. Now like, that you mention it. Yeah. <laughs> And proceeded to logically break down everything the guy said, and it, it didn't matter. It was one of the, and it wasn't even like uh, one of the people where religion is realistic, where it's like, you know, I'm I'm not sure what's out there. I like this belief system; it works well into my my you know scheme of things and how the world works. That's what he was like. This is true because God said it's true. I was like, well, how do you know that? Well, it's in the Bible. I was like, who wrote the Bible? Man. Uh-huh. Okay. And, I say and that then, all the time. It's I'm just saying, like, I'm not saying you're necessarily wrong. I'm saying everything in reality that is measurable says that you're wrong. <laughs> but believe whatever you want. Don't try to tell me that I'm wrong though, because there's nothing that points to me <laughs> being wrong in that instance. I, I I hate you know I hate those kind of people who cast judgment on you because you don't believe the thing that that they believe right like I don't have a problem with you having a different belief than me my problem comes in when they say things like well this is the truth and if you don't believe it you're dumb right yeah. that drives me nuts until like I come across somebody who like clearly believes you know what I'd really like to have on here I'd like to have a uh, I'd like to talk to a flat earther like that'd be really fun to me to talk to somebody who really believes in a flat earth. <laughs> I bet I you hope Joe Bloom believes that. <laughs> oh, he, well, he deleted me a while ago. But like, then I come across someone who's a flat earther and my like, believe what you want thing falls on its face because I'm like, fuck you. If you believe that the earth is flat, you are actually retarded. Like, <laughs> not, like... <laughs> that's, that's the struggle I have is not getting irritated to the point where I'm just flinging insults because clearly they are stupid. But then if I call them stupid, they can just say that I'm over the top and then they can continue thinking whatever they are thinking right. rather than saying, okay, I understand what you're saying. And then providing just a, a, a plethora of information that proves everything that they think and believe is incorrect. Right. And then they still, they still are going to believe me, but then at least not, I'm not entirely an asshole about it. In these days, if you do that, the, the, you know, you throw a bunch of, you know, scientific evidence at them and they're going to be like, that's just what big science wants you to think, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep being a sheeple. Sheep. That's fine with sheep, me. Man. Like, sheep. <laughs> I just want to throttle those people. <laughs> no, fuck you. That's not how this works. God damn it. That's what happened with that, that guy. He was like, <laughs> he kept calling sheep. And it's funny because like he would say trigger, trigger, triggered all the time. I'm like, you're you're, you're kind of triggered too, bro. Like you're going into your, <laughs> like to a typical rant. I've heard that rant a hundred times. Like I was like, why would people want to make, <laughs> why would they want to make you s sick? Why would they kill you? They need you to be alive <laughs> so they can get money out of you. If you are dead, they don't get money out of you. They want you to be barely alive. It's just what, it's just what big anti-vax wants you to think, man. Oh, but you just go ahead and keep believing those lies, sucking down that fake argument. news. They're like, I know somebody that their kid, they got their kid vaccinated, and then their <laughs> kid got autism. And I was like, yeah, well, did did you breastfeed? 
Have you blamed breastfeeding on autism? Did you have diapers on them? Is, Did you read to them when they were young? I've heard reading to kids is, is linked to autism. Is big is big pampers <laughs> behind <laughs> autism rates skyrocketing? No, you fucking morons. They've changed how they... Oh, Testing God, it drives so me so much nuts. better. There's, like, there's so many factors that to why it shows up more now. I mean, think about... Think about it in terms of like, I mean, I think I'm a, around, we're all around the same age. I might be yeah. a little bit older, but like, think about how it was when we were little kids. There were definitely people that were fucking autistic or like, I hate to say it for lack of a better term, but partially retarded that should not have been in like regular classes that were getting like, eh, go ahead, like shoved through and they weren't, and people weren't noticing it. They were just like, he's just dumb. Do you know what I mean? Clearly, like, we have a new president and then, now. <laughs> and then beyond that, there were also people who they just like, like, bro, I hate to say it like this, but I mean, somebody like me who was just, I just was a little bit like severely ADHD and just horrible at paying attention and destroyed shit all the time. Like they never, they were never like, oh, you need to go to a doctor. You have this, you have that. It was, I got my ass whipped until I learned how to deal with it. But but kids and kids like you disappeared into the sea. Like I'm a believer that if you take any eight to ten year old boy to a doctor, especially in the '90s, if you took any eight to ten year old boy to a doctor and said he doesn't pay attention in class, he's getting shitty grades, and he's fucking nuts all the time, they'd be like, oh yeah, ADD, ADD and and they and they'd give you Ritalin. And so like kids who may have been really severely kind of hampered like you disappeared into that sea of kind of like everybody had add back then you know what i mean like i mean there was I a little bit of that, worse but... now i don't know how how old are your kids my kids are 10 and 7 yeah so you, you probably lived through a whole different generation of how they how I mean, the system deals with that sort of thing well it's it's a lot different than when we were younger but like i feel like there are other things that that the system has adapted to that are even better like um, my daughter had a hard, hard time enunciating certain letters when she was in like first or second grade. Mm -hmm. And rather than just allowing her to be picked on and not say shit, right. They like, she had to take speech therapy classes and it was something they added. I don't ever remember seeing anybody take speech therapy when we were younger or anything like that. Like you had to be like, th th it existed, but it was for like severe, it wasn't like you didn't say a couple of words right. Like yeah. it was like severe lisps or like that poor kid I punched. That that poor kid <laughs> who haunts me to this day. <laughs> you punched a kid with a lisp. Fuck that kid. He was a dickhead. <laughs> it was the classic case of the the kind of snake eating its own tail, where like he got picked on, and so he was a dick about it. And so he got picked on more. And I think he'd been through a bunch of different schools and cycles of that. And by the time he got to our school, he was just pure asshole. <laughs> and then he came across Mikey. And, and it just, found the bigger asshole. It didn't end well. <laughs> and that was his last year at our school. And he moved on from there. I don't know where he is. He's probably dead. Beat or, up a lisp, kid. I don't. It's terrible. You fucking hit him hard. <laughs> He was being an asshole. That was yeah. that so was it was a very deserving true. hit. It was a deserving hit. Mm. Hey, see, that's <laughs> I had totally forgot about it, but he brought it up on the podcast a while ago. I was like, "Holy shit!" I totally did not like. I said any he was he was being an asshole, but like, I get how he got there, and it wasn't. I mean, he had a bad lisp, and like, he was he was a he was a dweeb, right? He was a a weird. Yeah, so it didn't help. Yeah, but weird so are we. looking. No, no, we were nerds, right? Yeah. He was like that weird, lispy. He was. He wasn't an albino, he but he was. He was kind of close. Hang out with. He had Chris Hardwick has a bit about this. He had old parents. I'm sure his parents <laughs> were in their fifties or sixties. Yeah. Like he came. How does how does he say it? Hardwick says like a. He came from old sperm. Like. <laughs> <that> was, <laughs> Um, but that described Eric to a T. And so like we were in fifth grade at the time, yeah. maybe. And you could tell he'd been to school after school after school. I think it, we were his third school. And like they just moved him around to try and get to a place where like he wouldn't just get teased all the time. And then, yeah, it just it, it was a poor ending. God, they should have just gotten him speech therapy. 
he they had uh, he was he was one of the few kids i've ever i knew back then who left for a period of day to go to speech therapy I mean, they knocked it out with my daughter in a handful of months she fixed Just, it no problem she was in it for less than a school year and she was talking completely normal by the time they were done she was pronouncing l's like r's oh, really? that the, no, uh, no, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't the chink accent no 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 no, no. i'm sorry that's that's your kids it's like kind of borderline i'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's, sorry they're not here odd. i don't really know your kids yeah she's not gonna see this hopefully i mean well, I'm sorry, Jay's future. daughter, if you see this. I didn't really. Sorry, Eliza. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. The internet is told, forever. I shouldn't have told the internet about you. Speaking of racism, uh, Adam Jones, center fielder for the Baltimore Orioles, uh, traveled with the team to Fenway Park, uh, where it was uh, reported that not only did he have a bag of peanuts thrown in his direction, which is a weird thing weird to projectile. fling at somebody. <laughs> Which missed him and hit a cop, I guess. Yeah. I haven't seen the video well, if there the is video. any. It was, some, it was when he was that... running in the dugout. I thought it was from oh, the outfield. Oh, there's a video of it. I yeah, there was that. a video of it that came out today. Is there? Yeah, because that guy got caught, kicked out of the stadium, apparently is facing like a lifetime ban from Fenway, and there may be charges pressed on him. Man. And in, I mean, that's that's life. What else do you have to live for? Up there? Right. Yeah. Just oh, kill yourself. Football. If only they'd put baseball on television. Fuck. <laughs> They come to his house and like cut his cable connection with an oversized pair of scissors. Like, <laughs> your ban is oh, at you your house. Went too. in your Segway early. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> <laughs> that could have gone right. In oh, you're right. Been, God damn funny. it! I should. Uh, yeah, I fucked that up. Um, but uh, in addition to having legumes thrown at him, uh, he also uh, uh, says that he had uh, uh, had the N word shouted at him. Um, you know, by a few people in the audience. I mean, obviously, it wasn't a group chant. It wasn't a European soccer match or anything like that. I don't know. It was Boston. I mean, they said it was. They said there was more than one person thrown out for it. So the Red Sox say they threw one guy out for it. Well, they um, said there was the peanut guy, and they said that they they had somebody who was ejected from the game. As in what? At least what I read right. in the article. Yeah, today. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so what it was two total. Yeah, there's a peanut guy, and then there was the end bomb guy. Yeah. Um, Jones seemed to insinuate there was more than one person who was maybe shouting at him. Oh, yeah, there had to have been. Um, I mean, it, yeah, it's Fenway. It's 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 Baston. Like well, it's mean, the least yeah, surprising I mean, thing I've ever heard. Known for the restraint. I'll say that. <laughs> you guys watched the game yesterday? No. Because all right, Adam. Jo I mean, you guys have watched Adam Jones play before, though. He's a pretty fiery guy. Mm -hmm. But there was a point. I want to say it was like the sixth or seventh inning where he was he was running in to make like a diving catch. I believe it was like a Hanley Ramirez hit. And he kind of had to do a dive and roll. And when he came out of this roll, he was facing like the back wall. And you saw him kind of throw his hand up in the air like, how about that? Or something like that. Right. And you could tell when he turned around that he was pissed. I mean, like legitimately pissed. So I'm going to guess for him to have made a reaction like that and to be that genuinely upset about it and then to talk about it after the game, it was probably going on inning after inning while he was out there until that point where he, he kind of – made an emotional move at this crowd because dude, i thought he flipped off the crowd yeah and when you do that you're feeding the fire yeah right? you're, like, you're making it worse so uh, like i kind of thought that's what it looked like and then i saw a replay of it and i was like oh no he kind of just put his hand in the air like how about that kind of right. thing it, i, I want to teach pro ball player like any sport the way i deal with road rage where you just deflect and send it right back to him blow him a kiss the way it is. <laughs> something like that something to just like send it right back at him and then they're fucking furious like hockey players know that oh yeah that's right they are hockey yeah yeah, are yeah. Great at wave great at each at other that, yeah. yeah oh are you man hearing, like, did you see they call them sunshine and stuff yeah <laughs> i can't remember who it was but uh so uh a player took took a puck to the face and they like, cut. like oh okay go ahead well like cut him over the brow and then whatever play continues and some guy is uh taunting him on the other side of the glass as he's walk or as he's skating away um and he sort of like mouths at him or whatever well later in the game puck flew over the glass hit that guy right in the face split him open <laughs> <laughs> and the player that got hit earlier skated over to the side and was like <laughs> waving at him i was like that is perfect that is how you handle that situation that guy will remember remember that shit for the rest of his fucking life that'll wake him up in the middle of like, 
that's all I hope. Like every every time somebody has some road rage incident, they're pulling up on me and trying to act all tough, and I blow them a fucking kiss. kiss. Like, oh. well, I mean, it does help that you're kind of an ox. Yeah, but would... it, they can't tell that in a car. Yeah, that would irritate the piss out of me. I don't know. I mean, no matter yeah. what, if somebody like yells you're a princess and blows a kiss at you you're upset <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. no it's not gonna i'm not and gonna be like me ah. feel better because then i'm less stressed <laughs> i'm now not angry i think it's hilarious <laughs> i'm laughing they're now upset and yelling at their car and they what you figure the average person you got like 10 15 minutes of them just screaming to themselves about this guy that just blew a kiss at him <laughs> that makes my day fuck that guy Dude, I, you're such an asshole. Yeah, yeah. I drive into the city. Every, I'm an asshole to the right people for the most part. I drive into Baltimore City every day, like deep into the city. So like, you know, pretty regularly, I'm on my horn. Somebody's doing something stupid around me, especially on like tourist days when it gets close to holidays in the summer. Or and games. If somebody fucking did that to me, <laughs> I might crash my car into them on the wrong day. <laughs> like, you know what? Fuck the Mustang. I don't even care. <laughs> well, I've had the same thing where... um I, I, I had a guy cut me off before, and I drove up and did the. They they're trying to jaw jack through the window at me, and I blew a kiss or whatever, and they kept pulling up on me and acting tough, and they had me driving near where I needed to go to turn towards my house, and we pull up at a stoplight at the same same time. The guy's like, "Why don't you get the fuck out of your car?" Then I was like, "Okay," <laughs> <laughs> drove my car over to the side of the road, pulled in at the restaurant near the corner. Got out of my car. It's I knew it's a long light because it's right by my house. <laughs> I get out of the car, walk over to the curb. I was like, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here, man. I'm waiting. And I, I like walk up to the car. I was like, dude, you coming out? He's like, you're a pussy. You won't fight me. I was like, come out. Get, get out of the car. Everybody wants to fucking fight until the fight's there. I'll fucking kill you. I don't give a shit. Get in my face. See how see how bad I put you in the hospital. Now that's some shit that wakes that guy up at night. I I hope. I hope. Yeah. I think in real life he's probably like, oh, I'd beat the piss out of that guy. But like, I like to believe that that keeps him. Awake I will when take he goes it to, to that bed. next level. I will take it to that point where you have no question. It's not like I would beat the piss out of that guy. It's like you had that option. Right. I I will leave him if, at the very least, he sits there and questions like, what if? Right. But, no. Right. So he's he's waking up at night like. <laughs> Man, I, I should have fought him. I should have fought him. But... We'll never know. <laughs> Just to be clear, you made the right move, but you probably shouldn't act like a prick in the first place if you weren't ready to follow through. I'm just imagining like a 93 year old man like on his deathbed, and his family's gathered around him. He's just thrashing about it. He's like, "Grandpa, calm down! I should have fought him." <laughs> that was it. That was his last words. What's he talking about? I don't know. He was in the wars, probably. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I, I've never understood that with people. Like, if you're not ready to go the full distance, if you have to. That's a Taco Bell. I could have <laughs> taken it. Yeah. God damn it. It was an Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, was, I'm imagining loafers when you're explaining this whole thing. I was like, mm. he turned into the front parking lot. It's of loafers, right across the street from me. Perfect. It's right across the street. No, I, I was I was, I was, was at the barbecue restaurant a little little bit further up. What's the, uh, you know. Oh. Oh, Kirkwood, Kirk, 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 Kirk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's oh, where oh, I was yeah. in my head. That was where you, the parking lot you'd gotten out in. <laughs> also, a solid parking lot to see a fight. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. People would be able to see it from the light. Yeah. But it it was great because I had a solid like forty five seconds to a minute where I'm just standing <laughs> on the corner like taunting these guys, and now like people that have no idea what's going on are starting to watch and are like, "What the fuck is going on here?" <laughs> good, good thing it wasn't the uh, was that the cell phone era. You might be on World Star. You know, there's there's been situations that I've been in where I've gone on to like World Star and tried to search keywords to figure out if, <laughs> if, if, if you're on there. Hmm. So uh so Adam Jones, uh, you know, the the best in sports media fires up and they're all like, Did it even happen or is he yeah. just is he you know, is he just up? making it up? Then uh, players come out of the woodwork, including guys like CeCe Sabathia and one of the players on the Red Sox, and they're like, 
Oh no, that no, that yeah. happens there all the time. That's yeah. Boston. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's just what fucking I mean, happens. I guarantee you it happens everywhere. Oh yeah, to but some I'm, degree. It's probably worse but it's in Boston. Fucking Boston. Yeah, there's a guy in every city who's gonna drink, you know, twenty three Miller Lights and then well, scream the N bomb at center field. I mean, there's like, that and think about the general nature of drunk, just ignorant Boston folk. Like like when I think of drunk people in Boston, I think of that bar in the Boondock Saints. Where they yes. just call everybody yeah. every <laughs> racial slur humanly possible in an under two minute clip. Now I need to go home and watch that movie. Fuck. Do you know what I'm talking about? They got, they make got sure through. you don't accidentally put in the second one. Cause it's no, terrible. it's just not. Now they're doing a... They're doing what, another one. It's wow. not a prequel. It's like probably in between the two. It's a... Uh, so it's a, I think it's going to be a TV series. And I think it's going to follow damn. them after the trial that ends at the first. You're going to see their like adventures and what they do with their dad, I guess. I don't know. That's going to be awful. Sounds terrible. They probably can't get the dad. He's probably dead or not interested because he's like a real actor, I think. Yeah, wasn't that like Chris Christopherson or something like that? Yeah, it was. It was somebody, it cl- like it it was somebody was close to him. His yeah. name's Billy something, I think. Oh, wait, it's the comedian. He's he was a, comedian. a real actor. He's a comedian? Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, I he, think you're right. I don't, I don't remember. I think he's his actually name. Scottish, though. Was he, was he in Monty Python? Maybe I was. I'm starting to think that he might have been in that Monty Python like whole line of comedians, possibly. The Boondock Saints, 1999. It's like how, uh, quick, how quickly can we get this? Answer? Norman Norman Reedus, Sean Patrick Flannery, Willem Dafoe, David Della Rocco plays who, Rocco. Who plays I didn't know David that. Rocco, his his real name. Billy Connolly. That's him. That's him. Uh, he's, yeah, he's a comedian. Is he? Mm-hmm. Oh, he was also in The Last Samurai, which I like, even though it's kind of racist. I never um, saw that. Last Samurai. It's one of those white man saves the world pictures. Oh. Like, it takes place in feudal Japan. And Tom like, Cruise replaces Ken, whatever his name is, commonly used Asian guy in movies, as the badass samurai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like white man the saves samurai the are losing their battle until Tom Cruise shows up. Was that one of the big, like, the first big whitewashing examples, or...? It was an early one. I don't know well, if it no, was I the first one. They at least um, use Last Asians of the Mohicans. Last of the Mohicans is the earliest one of those I can remember. The Indians are dying until the white man shows up and now right. everything's going to be okay. Um, now, I think in both of those movies, everything doesn't really end up okay. But, like, you get the idea. Yeah. The white man's the he hero. The yeah, like, we can't just tell the story man. about Asian people, God forbid. Like, you know. And better yet, it's Tom Cruise. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a five foot seven, 120 pound white guy is going to save the day. I mean, at least he has a sword. You think he's that, you think he's that light? He's, he, he can't be that light. He's probably not that he's light. He's little, but, but he's not he's 120. Little. He's going to be. He's probably like a buck 50, buck 60. Tops. <sighs> he's like five, six, five, seven. Yeah, you probably. I think, I think there's no way he's any bigger than like 170. I think you're right. I think you're in the right ballpark. 150 even, to 170. Even with like because he's is well he now? built, but he's but he's not big. He's thin, right? Like, yeah. but he's a fit guy, so he's got to have a lot of muscle mass there. So I think he's heavier than he probably looks, but he's not heavy. Like he's not 200 pounds or something stupid like he, that. Oh, he's definitely not sniffing 200 pounds. Not and I'm not close. sure he's five seven. Is he shorter? Than, I think uh, they say he's like really he's... really little. That's what like I'm saying. Like, I, I'm not sure claims, he's that tall. I think he claims 5'7". <laughs> he might he's be probably five, more five. like 5'5". Five, five, yeah. He's 5'7 in those like sketchers with the big foam soles. Because <laughs> yeah. like, <yeah. laughs> I'm thinking, what's uh, Conor McGregor fights at 145, so he probably walks at 160, 170. Jesus Christ, it's yeah. so depressing to know that there's a man out there who could absolutely ruin me with his bare hands that I have by 100 pounds. <laughs> Fuck. But he... I think Conor McGregor is 5'9", and then obviously he's phenomenal shape, so it's a, a little different. 5'9", little... fights at 145. Mm-hmm. Jesus 5'9", seems like a reach for him, though. I, I want to say he's 5'9". I, I have that stuck in my head, but I have no idea. Um, I haven't been keeping up with MMA like I used to. But... Hey, Siri. How tall is Conor McGregor? This isn't going to work. fucking course you don't fuck off <laughs> but this entry says he's five foot nine dang weight 155 i mean that's probably walking right 
He's fought at 155 before, right? Yeah, he's fought yeah, at yeah, one, yeah. 145 is where he got his first title. And then he got the 155. He's fought at 170. He fought Nate Diaz at, at 170. At 170. Okay. Yeah, um, he's listed at five foot nine. But he pro- he probably walks around at like 170. Okay. And then, you know, three months before a fight, he starts cutting down and then cuts the last 10 pounds or so in water weight. But it's such a silly practice. Can't they get rid of that? Can't they, they just weigh them at ringside? I mean, they want It a, seems so dangerous and stupid. Oh, it's horribly dangerous. Yeah. But if you're good at it, it gives you a big advantage. Yeah, but you go to the ring, like, I mean, if you're good at it, but, like, you know, young guys, guys who are inexperienced, and even guys who are trying to reach, like, you get to the ring weak and dehydrated. Like, it's just fucking... Those are the only deaths they've had in <laughs> MMA. <laughs> Jesus. Have been uh, cutting weight. So, like, wouldn't... There's been a couple of them. I, but, yeah, but there's going to be some retards down the road. You know what I mean? There's going to be some people with some serious problems who are in that. So what's the what's the argument against that? I legitimately don't know what it is. Why can't they weigh them ringside and say this is this is what you, you know, you got to weigh this much to step into the ring or we'll cut into your purse or whatever. Um like. I think because it it takes away from from the time to be able to t- determine that. Because now it's like if you're if you're overweight you're given a little bit of extra time to try to cut the last little bit, and if you don't make weight, the preview the your opponent has the option to continue with the fight, but then you've sacrificed some of your purse. So, I mean, couldn't you do it like an hour beforehand? Yeah, potentially. You know, without the option for like you know no fucking IVs in the last hour, like you don't want <laughs> you don't want to be trying to fucking rehydrate this guy like a water balloon in the last hour <laughs> before the fight, like. I, what, so what is the argument against well, it? Is I guess it? The, I guess the big thing would be is if the f- other fighter opts to not continue. So if I show up and I'm overweight, Mikey just be like, "Nope, no fight," and now your main event is off that day. I mean, yeah, I would think so because, like, think about because I mean, you could realistically show up, know that you're going into that, and just add as much weight as you possibly could at the last minute, knowing that you're just going to get hit with a fine, but you have a 25 pound weight advantage, maybe. Well, they still have to get. The, the fighter is given the option. And it and can we boost overweight penalties? Like, okay, if you're more than five pounds over, like or two pounds over, like you're not fighting in the UFC again. Like get your shit together. It's not that hard. Well that's like the contender right now, Anthony Johnson mm-hmm. for, for the uh wait, what is he going for? He's light heavyweight. Um he originally fought at 170 Mm -hmm. and and then later in his career as he got a little bit older had trouble getting there and then went up to 185 had trouble getting weight there (laughs) dude's dude's massive like i mean he's he's probably about my size but then used to fight at 170 what do you think he walks at like 200 or something like that like he probably walks on average at like 230 maybe in the full Jesus probably Christ. in the full off yeah season. i mean come on he's like, cutting 60 off just no yeah. problem when he when he was like now that he's fighting at 205 it wouldn't surprise me if he goes as high as 240 or something because he gets a little bit softer he's just a big dude like can you like could you do something where and i'm i'm just spitballing here like not this exact scenario could you do something where like I'm going to fight at 170. I'm not going to fight at 170. But like <laughs> <laughs> if uh uh if dare I'm going to fight dare to dream. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um if I was going to fight at 170 okay, I'm in UFC. I'm fighting. I'm part of the 170 division. Could we weigh them every 2 weeks moving up to the fight and you got to average 170 the whole way so that you're walking at the weight at which you fight? Yeah, there's. I mean, there's a lot of talk in MMA about how to handle that because they're starting to really worry about the the dehydration issues, like people having serious damage to their bodies from from doing these extreme cuts, like losing twenty pounds in two days and that kind right. of shit. And I'm sure it doesn't it doesn't help things that you're taking massive blows to the head and the body while being dehydrated. You know what I mean? Because think about it, just oh, yeah. the dehydration. If you're dehydrated and you're just out in the sun, that shit can put you out. Yeah. So imagine taking 
punches of massive force to the head the entire time you're dehydrated. And your brain is floating in like a vat of yeah. fluid, which I'm sure <laughs> isn't at its maximum when you've sucked 24 pounds off of your body in a week. Um, <clears throat> who's, the, who's the... I don't know who it is. Somebody who was claiming the other day, I guess there was a fighter who went to try and make weight and like he was off by a significant margin, like a, like several pounds, and then like he took his shorts off, and the two guys came out with a towel, and they're claiming that like he just kind of grabbed the towel, and the two guys held it taut and just took those couple of pounds off. Daniel Cormier. He, oh, yeah. Cormier, that's right. <laughs> yep, that's the big, and it was pretty obvious, and and he comes from a wrestling background. So, so you think like I mean, Dana they, the cheating tricks? They you think know, Dana White? All that you think like Dana White just saw it and was just like winked it off? Like I, I need fucking Cormier to fight. Like just let it go. Yeah, absolutely. Hundred <laughs> percent. I saw it. I was like, you could see, you could see from the pictures beforehand. It was. I was like, he's obviously hanging. <laughs> who, who like Gret? Like they're hanging the towel in front of you so your junk isn't showing to the cameras. <laughs> you don't need to grip that shit like it's gonna like fly away like. <laughs> And why? And why is your your corner man like struggling? To hold that <laughs> yeah, they're, like, they're playing a tug of war with one another. And you're yeah, like holding I mean, on to the middle of it. It was pretty obvious. It was. <laughs> that shit is so corrupt. Oh, that's funny. It's awesome <clears throat> the stuff they slip by. Get your bets in now. The Washington Capitals are down two one, but have managed to take out the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins star player with one of the most fragile brains in the game. Uh, what do you, oh, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, God. It's fucking true, I mean, man. No, if you're going to say most fragile brain in the game, I still throw back Lindros. The guy had like 9,347 <laughs> concussions. He's walking around like this now. I mean, wasn't, I mean, wasn't Crosby out for a year? Or most of it? It was close to a year. I mean, I mean, I kind of feel like it's karma with him, though. He's a little fucking it, dude, he, Yeah, he's, he's a little the, prick. He's one of the only ones I've ever seen literally go straight up behind somebody and go and be like, see if they got a cup. Like as and and not like a tap, Jesus. like both hands and just right up in between the legs. I'm like, really, dude? I mean, he's a huge piece of shit, but it, it still sucks to see somebody get injured. But then you hear everybody come into his defense, like trying to say. No, it was a clean hit. Gonna, yeah, it was a clean hit. I watched it. You can. See, it's one of those situations, like, uh, it's a situation like when it, it's gay that this happened in the NFL. But like when Tom Brady got his knee destroyed by the, uh, it was the somebody on the Bengals, I believe, when right. his knee got blown out, and they completely changed the rules about hitting quarterbacks in the knee. Like it was one of those things where they're like, "Oh, it's such a dirty play, such a dirty play." I was like, "Nah, dude, he he was like falling. Brady was coming for it. He wasn't trying to." Just let me take all my weight and throw it right on his knee. That wasn't what he was trying to do. Yeah, but you like, saw it. This thing was Crosby was going down as he was coming into the hit. Yeah, he clearly lost his skates from <clears> under him <throat> and was falling on his own. This gonna didn't even look like he was trying to hit him. If if anything, it was just a defensive like push it, away. It, it was kind of like a it, get off me kind of really thing. It really didn't look like a hit so much. And you. And if anything, it, it certainly wasn't intentional as like he was headhunting. For clarity, fuck Crosby. But that being said, if it had been exactly reversed and the player had been taken out had been Alex Ovechkin, I would be calling for blood. I would. I don't think I'd be able to see through that, that situation if I was a Pittsburgh, I get what Pittsburgh Penguin fans were saying right now. That is a different team without him. He's a fragile player. You could talk to them all day. They're not going to believe you that that was a clean hit. Like, and I feel like I'd feel the same way. I don't think I would, but I mean, you'd just be like, "Well, bad luck is bad luck. Like that shit happens." Like, yeah, I mean, like you know, I'd be like, "This fucking bullshit always happens to us." But well, like, that's true. I mean, you guys aren't going to win anyway. Just throwing that out there. So the question I had is, does that motivate the Penguins to complete the crushing of the Capitals, or will they not be able to function as well without their their leader, moral center, and uh, fragile, chewy nougat center? Dude, if, if you really think about it, though, they function without him a lot. Malkin is the, Malkin is the core of that team. Uh, yeah, okay. Crosby may be okay. a generational yeah. player. Malkin is the one that carries that team. You're right. You're right. He's not the. You're right. He's not the emotional core to the team. It, it's. 
But he's a huge a, piece. It's not a situation where, like, I look at it this way. If if you guys lost Ovechkin, that's worse than what has happened to the Penguins. I yeah, agree. I, I agree he, with that. Because Ovechkin is the heart and soul of the team. He's the face of the team, and he's the best player on the team. Yeah. Crosby, no, to me, is not better than Malkin because he can't stay on the fucking ice. Well, there's that. He can't stay on the ice. And he's he's kind of soft. He's a bitch. He's a crybaby all the time. He reminds me of Yarmir Yager. <laughs> no, I, yeah, no, I, I get that. He 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 whines more than anybody else. Malkin anybody is in gritty. He is a he will he will fight to the bitter end all the time. Whereas I feel like Sid the kid is kind of like I push it when I'm open or where I see something. He's not full bore all the time. Right. I could agree with that side of it. Yeah. I just I think I think Malkin's the guy you got to worry about with them over over Crosby and Crosby's gone now so. I watched a game in the first cap series and I watched one of the opposing players take a dive, like a nasty dive. Like he got tapped on the arm and he literally leapt into the air and gripped his arm and fell to the ice. Is that like that prevalent in hockey these days? Like, is that going on? I've like, seen a lot more of it because uh, you, you, see- can, you can actually get a penalty for diving. Right. So a- as you, you should. Yeah. If you fake a, a penalty, like something's happened to you, yeah, sure. yeah. you, you, you can get slashed or something. It. Yeah, it was like but it was, it was if you, looked like soccer. If you embellish, they they allow it, and I think more hockey players are becoming okay with that. Oh, they need to nip that shit in the bud. I mean, yeah. right off. I'm That's okay the whole reason it, I can't watch soccer. Yeah, I hate so- men's soccer for that, but I'm okay with it in hockey for one reason. You you watch hockey. We had a guy play with a torn ACL and MCL and finished a series with a shredded knee. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, but that doesn't make flopping okay. But no, but I'm saying they are the toughest people in sports regardless of anything. That's so if true. They wanna, if they want to play up a possible slash to try and get a call, I'm not really going to kind of hate on them for that. I because, don't want guys trying to get calls. Dude, but at the same time, there's guys who've got their – their throat slit and hockey pucks to the teeth. And I'm like, these are the toughest guys in the world. I'm, I'm not trying to take anything away from them. I agree with you, but I don't want guys fucking flapping. It is. It, it makes soccer unwatchable to Americans, not the rest of the world. Um, it, the NBA is getting worse every year with it. Ugh, well, um, that's LeBron-y. You know, it's, uh, people want to act like he's the only one doing that. Shit. No, but he's, they all he's bad. It. Hockey's got enough problems drawing in new viewers without adding that dr- fake drama to, to the rink. Like, I mean, I'm not saying do it where it's like, oh, I brush into you and you throw yourself on the ice. But if I'm coming down the ice fast and I swing my stick around and I kind of slash you, if you want to throw your hand up or grab your arm because it, I mean, it was a slash, then so be it. If you want to do you know that I mean? and get the call on the ice, I'm okay with that. But I want the NHL watching the replay. And if they can tell that you did that, you lose your paycheck for the game. Well, I mean, you can get penalized. Like I said, if you flop, you can get penalized. I, wallets. So there's kind of, you know, I, I don't know wallet. what the the standard for that is, though. Like, I don't know how right. bad, yeah. how egregious does it have to be for you to get that penalty? I've never seen one. And what kind of penalty it is exists. it? Like, is somebody in the box? Well, it's like a, like, it's like a two know. minute minor, I believe. For is a flop. it? Whoever okay, flops, that's, it's that, like a two yeah, that's pretty, I can't that's... even remember what it's called, but it's like <laughs> I know, I know it exists. I just don't. I, I've never seen one. I'd rather see the flop rule instituted in the NBA. Absolutely. Harder to harder to enforce there, I think. There are bad, egregious examples there. I, I mean, maybe I'm like, wrong. Dude, I feel like in the finals last year, I saw Steph Curry bump into LeBron, and LeBron was like, oh, my God, on the ground. I'm like, dude, he's, he's a third your size. Yeah. Like, there's no fucking way that little guy can knock you down. And Like, like and think about it, dude. LeBron is huge. <laughs> And yeah, he a, is on the court boy. at least 15 times a game on his ass or his back at least 15 times a game. So when we were kids, we played on a, on a rec league basketball team. We were maybe 11, 12, maybe. Um, and we played on a rec league basketball team and Mike was really good. Cause he was bigger than everybody else. And he had a basketball hoop in his driveway. So 
he was he was destroying everybody that we came across until the day that we came across the team um full of black kids i was trying to find a politically correct way to say it <laughs> but like it was the only team in the league that was like maybe four kids on the court were black and they were way better than we were including the one kid who must have had me by at the time 30 or 40 pounds and it was my job to guard him. We were in man on man. And it was my job to guard him. And he would have the ball. And I would be out in front of him right around center court. And he'd be doing crossover dribbles and shit like that. And then he knew that I didn't fucking know what I was doing. And he would come at me. And so this guy, he sees me. And he comes at me. And I'm shuffling my feet. And he gets into me. And I get called uh, uh, for blocking, right? Because I don't have my feet yeah, set. Feet so set. I get the so I get knocked down to the fucking ground, and I and now I've been had a foul <laughs> called on me, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like I did, did you see what he did to me? And they're like, no, no, you gotta gotta keep your feet, yeah. plant your feet next time. Eat I'm it. like, okay. A couple of plays later, he's got the ball. We're in the, virtually the same spot on the court, and I'm like, all right, plant my feet, don't move. I'll stop this guy. And he's doing his crossover dribble and he comes at me. And because he's got 40 pounds on me, I tense up and I put my shoulder into it to take the hit. And he fucking knocks me over again. And I take the fucking blocking call again. I'm like, fuck this game. <laughs> I don't understand anything. So the, I should have I should have just flopped. That was that was the that was the, take the, the goal there. there. Yeah, I still there remember kids. That. The lesson is flop more often. <laughs> Can I also throw out there that you said Mike instead of Mikey, and it just sounded so weird? I mean, I called him Mike my whole life. I mean, the whole Mikey thing kind of came about, you know, in your 20s more. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've only been going by Mikey in, yeah, about 19, 20. Because it was when I got, like, more deeply rooted in the restaurant industry, and there were 95 Mikes at the Oh, yeah, that, that kind of make, makes sense. And there was a kid that I went to, the, that we were in high school with, that called me mikey t and then i remembered that when there was like six mics at one restaurant and already a mike t you know, that's how everyone was like mike mike j mike d mike t no, and then there was the already a mike t so i've switched over to mikey t and it's stuck ever since so. i see i figured they would have went with the other restaurant standard because it's always like white mike mexican mike black mike asian mike well, this is like glenn bernie so oh like, uh, it was all white mics yeah i could have been like I, I would have been like Mike that finished high school. <laughs> <laughs> Mike with all his teeth. Yeah, that would have I would have stood out more in the Glen Burnie area. Mike without the crack habit. Yeah. So we're at an hour. Do you have a bedtime that you would need to be home by? I'm not really in any pressing. I don't know. My phone's vibrated like ten times, but I mean I don't fucking care. Well, you're in fucking trouble. <clears throat> I'd say we're in trouble. I don't know. I'd say we good. wrap this up for now and can we fire another one up cuz I've got I don't know three or four things and some would you rather that we can do. I mean, I don't know that we could do another full hour. We could certainly we do a little bit more. Should we double up on would you rather? We we'll do one real quick. Do one now and then do another one. Yeah, yeah sure we can do. Fuck that. It. I didn't I don't think I pulled a card. <laughs> oh shit. Is this an old one? Probably. This might be an old one. Oh god. Crap. Grab the box either way. It's probably. Oh, no, it's a new one. It is? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll kill it. <clears throat> end it. End it with a would you rather. Would you rather, given that you are a 45 minute walk or a 20 minute run from the nearest toilet facility and you have a strong need to take an immediate dump, do you walk or run to the toilet? So you got to take a dump. You're either a 45 minute walk or a 20 minute run. Which do you do? This kind of assumes that I can run for 20 minutes. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is so much different than this, we haven't really heard one like this. This is a tough one. By the way, have you, I don't know if you've kept up with the show. You weren't here when we <clears> added this. I don't think so. This is. Uh, I'm up to. I'm up in the 20s. I don't know if I've caught. I've seen most of them. I don't think I've seen the last couple. Well, we started doing these 20 ish. Yeah, somewhere around then. But anyway, uh, I say I say run. You're just gonna run a solid forty five minutes. Well, it's, what is it, walk forty five? Or walk twenty minutes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Walk okay. forty five or run twenty. I feel like if you're running, you're you're more tense anyway. I agree. You're less likely to have. Well, I, I would way, say you're shitting yourself. I would say it doesn't increase your odds of uh, 
dropping a load all through your pants. So I'm I'm going with it's more just more jarring though. I'm but yeah, I, I agree. I'm gonna disagree. I'm gonna go with the walk for the simple reason of you ever notice if you get that super bubble guts like I gotta go right fucking now. You can't really move fast because you're afraid uh, that's a it's going to squirt out. <clears throat> yeah, you got to kind of walk like you you're just like, got off oh, a horse or oh something. God, yeah, you're doing it's a It's a weird walk. question because if I'm getting the bubble guts, I, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm doing anything for 45 minutes that's, you know, besides I mean, shitting like my I pants. Like I said, regardless, you're shitting yourself. Right. Either one of those times, I feel like it, yourself. it gets exponentially worse. So the longer you wait, I feel like it just gets worse. You're probably right. The waves start coming faster and faster. I just For don't... me, I feel like it's more of a time sensitive thing <laughs> than it is an action sensitive. I don't know, man. I, th- I think sometimes you can fight off the need to shit sometimes, though. That's true. Don't you can like you 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 beat it back your, depending. You've been in your you car wait. before where you're like, oh, fuck. I have like, I'm like 20 minutes from home and I'm not going to make it. You're like, dear God, dear God, dear God. Like four minutes later, you're like, actually. I can slow down a little bit. <laughs> then, you get home to go <laughs> then, you, then you regret that decision. <laughs> Would you rather have a stranger strike up a conversation with you while you are taking a dump in the public restroom or take a dump with no toilet paper in your stall? A lot of shit questions this week. Yeah, right? Um, I guess I'll just talk with somebody because I would hate to have to deal with no toilet paper. There's no clear resolution to that situation. Because that means finger hands and washing afterwards. I you better mean, hope there's a cat walking by or something. <laughs> I mean, I need details, right? Like, is this, a, is this a day after drinking dump? Like, or, you know, did so I have I some... Be able to pinch it clean. Did I have some fruits and vegetables last night? Like, <laughs> where am I? Like, am clean I, break. you know... Am I wearing three t-shirts? <laughs> Am I at the mall? Does anybody yeah. care? Like, am I at work? You know, am I on a crowded bus? Like, I, you know, there are I, questions here that need man, to be I answered. Like, I feel like shitting and somebody talking to you is completely different than somebody talking to you while you're trying to piss at a urinal. I, talking in the bathroom is completely unacceptable. Shut the fuck up. I agree. Unless we're like at a baseball game or something like that. Say, man, my rule is normally if your junk is out, don't talk. Yeah. Like, I have no problem with the dudes in the line behind me talking to each other. Don't speak to me while, A, I'm either holding my dick yeah. or while you're holding your dick. Shut the fuck up. If you're going to use your phone, put it on vibrate so I don't hear you playing fucking Candy Crush in the stall. <laughs> and, it, you know, don't. The other thing that bothers me are the guys who, like, come in and treat it as, like, a fucking lounge area. And they, like, put their bags down, and they're, like, washing their face, and they're taking a drink, and they're getting their hair together. Just fucking do your business. Get the fuck out. Like, I'm trying but to take a dump. But wash your fucking hands. Yeah. And, yeah, and wash your hands. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah. It still bothers me. <laughs> How the fuck many people will go into the bathroom and not fucking wash Wait, their hands? Now, do you wash your hands every time you piss? Yeah. There are occasions where I don't have an issue with not well, washing your hands after pissing. Well, unless you do the like, if you like, you unzip and then just let it out. <laughs> I was like, if you have the, if you have on like khakis and you can undo the belt and zipper so it's open and you can just do the boxer flop, you know what I'm talking about? You yeah. Know, floop and like kind of floop it under, no, your, he under uses your meat. The flap. Yeah. Yo, I'm, I'm we a had zipper the, guy. I, wait, I think I was here when yeah. you. Oh, was that, <laughs> was that the last time you were on? We talked about that. I think. I, I think I, I've heard about it. If we didn't talk about it, I watched that one where you're talking about how you use the, the dick hole in the uh, Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a zipper dick hole guy. Well, see, yeah, I'm also yeah, not yeah. a boxer guy. Like, I'm a boxer brief guy, and I feel like it's easier to do the dick flap with that where you physically do not touch your own cock the entire time you're pissing. I get that. And if, and and I'm saying there are definitely times where I'm real drunk, and I do the boxer flop, and I'm so drunk that I do the wall lean that I end up washing my hands. Yeah, I, I think it's probably just good practice to wash your hands. I think that's why. Dick that's probably why I do it because it, of being in the industry so long. Well, the industry like, I always did it. When yeah, I was working. even if I, even if I didn't use the rest, if I went in the restroom and someone saw me leaving yeah. without wash my yeah, hands. Yeah, I got in trouble. I got in trouble for that once, and it was fucking stupid. I uh, I showed up for work and I needed to put my uniform on because I was coming from somewhere else. So like, I go in, I go into one of the stalls, close it you know 
throw on my uniform shirt, button it up, tuck it into my pants, and then I just left. And I didn't wash my hands. And there was a customer in there, and he reported it to my manager. And they're like, did you fucking leave the restroom without washing your hands, you savage? And I was like, oh, no, I didn't, like, actually use the bathroom. And, of course, no one fucking believed yeah. me. They just thought I was an asshole. See, I um, do think it's dirty when you take a shit and don't wash your hands. I don't yeah. know how you can live with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking filthy human being. But you know there are people that, like, enjoy the fact that they've not washed their hands and like shake hands with other people and touch stuff and like, you know that and you also know that there are people who don't realize the whole conceptual nature of the way it all works like you know you know the reason why there's a lid on your toilet bowl right because if you don't shut that bitch and you flush shit spore goes up into the air yeah that's what the lid is for well, that's it's what to also encase bugs, the dump like i have to i wash my hands and keep the paper towel to open the, the door. door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you wash your... Because what good oh, is that? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, Are you... Like, oh, no. That See, too. I'm yeah, not that's... that. And I'm not a germaphobe. But that's one thing. Like, it takes no extra effort. Yeah. And I can avoid having shit all over my hands. Yeah, but I'm always caught behind that motherfucker who tries to get cute with the paper towel. And he picks it up. And he, and he opens it up. But now he wants to throw it in the trash can. And the trash can's a little too far from the door. So now he's got to do the thing where he holds the door with his foot and kind of <laughs> lean over and throw it away. <laughs> no, fuck you. Just grab the handle. Like, come on. It's, we live in a dirty world. Deal with it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he kind of has a point in that aspect, too, because you know what you did as soon as you went back out into that bar, right? You touched money, which had just as much shit on it yeah, yeah, as that door handle. And probably right, a lot more Before cocaine. I think about that too much longer, let's just, just go on to the next thing. <laughs> Would you rather <laughs> suck... Co- oh, God damn it, what? we're on to a suck one. <laughs> Danny would where, be proud. Where's bitch ass when we need him? Would you rather suck clean an unknown person's set of dentures... Or eat popcorn that has been blown out of an elephant's trunk. Wildly specific. Popcorn out of a trunk. Yeah, I kind of want to say the trunk. Like, I don't know what I, that. I don't, I don't know what that's like. I don't. I'm either. guessing it's. I think that's why I'm saying. Wet and sloppy I'm okay. and gross. I feel like it's like the inside of a nose. Yeah, like I feel like it's got to be sloppy and gross. So it's probably horrible. But think about how nasty somebody's. Oh. De- <laughs> Ugh. No, I'm going dentures. Because that, that's fucking, that's booger popcorn. Elephant booger popcorn. <laughs> but I feel like I could be like chomp chomp swallow. Like chomp green, chomp swallow. What if it's got like green chunks on it and stuff? Chomp chomp that's swallow. That's the inside of his nose. Pinch my nose, what chomp chomp swallow. What if I blew a snot rocket onto a piece of popcorn? Could you eat that? Even chomp chomp swallow? If I had to force what myself to. What if I ate to? it with my dentures and then handed them to you and said, <laughs> could you suck this off for me? <laughs> I guess it's a good question. Like, what, what, what's been done with the dentures that day? Like, I guess you know. I mean, what if they were on a like an ass eating expedition? Yeah. Are no, there a no. lot of people on with dentures that are eating ass? Oh yeah, I didn't read that. Side note: the dentures are covered in shit. <laughs> they probably didn't wash their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather, while playing charades with an uptight church group? Have to act out the concept of sex. <laughs> that one. Or Sorry. have to act out the concept of masturbation. What? Uh, I'm going with masturbation. Let's go with ultimate awkwardness. I think this is aimed at religious people. Because I should feel uncomfortable with those. But I yeah, I don't. I don't have a problem with either of those. Maybe maybe substitute like your parents or something i'm trying to figure out which one would take longer to get them to say out loud i think masturbation goes real quick to get them to say out loud so imagine the most conservative people you know and you're middle you're in the middle of the charades group right yeah, they like they could say masturbate they're not going to be like beating your meat the round like- the round <laughs> the round before was i love lucy you know you did and some disney characters and now the next word on the card is masturbation how long do they have to watch you pretend to jerk off I don't before know. one I of them shouts masturbation moment. right that's that's exa- <laughs> i was kind of hoping for the longer one i'd be okay either way just like like intensely gyrating in front of a bunch of people that think that the magic sky being. What do you get into like the for... you get into like the push up position on the floor and just like hump the floor for a little bit like. That would be kind of. I'm trying to, to think of how I how I'd act out charades. sex. I, I, 
I, <laughs> you I do it old Beavis and Butthead style and like <laughs> hop up on the couch and thrust your crotch at the corner. A little bit of like acting out the nipple pinching. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Or do you mind doggy style? That's probably easier, right? No, because they're, the they're intensely religious. That stuff's not allowed. <laughs> That's the that work is. of the it's devil. It's on the table. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Would you rather go go all day with a lingering smell of vomit in your nose or with that urgent feeling that you have to go number two? Our third shit card. Our third shit question. Oh, man. I think, I guess the smell. I'd go smell because I feel like eventually you'd sort of tune it out. There's no tuning out the uncomfortable feeling of having this shit. I assume it's implied in the question. You're not going to tune it out. You know, it's like crazy church ladies always yeah. said like, Oh, you go to hell and you burn all the time. But like, you think you're going to get used to it. You don't get used to it. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'll still stick with that. I hate that feeling. Cause I don't. And, and I, sort of understand what that could be like because i don't like to shit in public bathrooms so public bathrooms is terrible so if i have if i have one of those you have to shits that's it's nerve-wracking for me because (laughs) like if i'm at work or out it's i'm like i need to go home i I need to leave because i don't want to be here and do it are you the privacy guy or you just don't like shitting around other people i don't know i don't know i just don't like it Never I, have. I don't I, I, no, I get it. No, like, I'm not a fan of it, but I mean, there's always like, I feel like there's always that time where everybody in their life has walked into a bathroom before and you see that guy who's in there shitting when you walk in and it's like nobody else was there, right? Then you go in and you do your thing and like you might bust ass a little bit or something or like make a few noises with the toilet paper. Dude's silent the entire time you're in there. He's like the mystery shitter. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you like go out and you leave and you're like, that guy, I was in there for four minutes shitting. That guy did not make a fucking sound. I always worry about the people. Like you go in there and somebody has clearly blown that shit up. <laughs> and then you walk in and just take a quick leak and then you walk out. And it's like, guys, that wasn't me. That just, I just want to make that clear. <laughs> I was I was in a I was in a public toilet one day and I, and I had blown it up like it was just no getting around it it was just one of those days I couldn't get around it like it wasn't good <laughs> and like some guy wandered in and he was just like oh god what the fuck man like and I was like fuck you like what do you, what do you want me to do like <laughs> I can't like <laughs> I'm gonna deal with it like I just, I can't. I was so angry. I thought I had a dive, bag one, time. <laughs> I thought I had a dive bag one time. The guy looked at me like I killed his children. <laughs> but then I'm thinking about like like Big Bear, that happened every day. <laughs> every day. He would go into that bathroom and clear out a level of the building. I was for... about to say that little tiny one on the second floor. Yeah. Like oh, oh man. Like a quarter of the building would be off limits for at least 45 minutes afterwards. Like you could eat just like through the walls, like, ah, I don't know how anatomically, I don't understand how he did it. It just, it just happens sometimes. It's like, can't, you know, you never know what some people meant. The Merc the kid I live with Merson. All right. Like understanding the structure of our houses. If you come up the top of steps, bathrooms right there, Matt's doors right here. My doors right over here. And our other roommates doors over here. Somehow Matt can take a shit and that smell makes it all the way into my room. Like comes clean out the bathroom through the hallway, <laughs> evades his doorway and just hits, hits my room. It's, looks like Hexus from Fern Gully. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, what a it's literally reference. like a corner of my room. <laughs> just smells like his ass. It's so horrible. The first corner, when you walk in my room, it just smells like his shit. Anytime he goes, it's, <laughs> fucking worst can we can we call the episode hexes from Ferngold? Hexes from Ferngold. <laughs> no because like that is my half favorite people. reference i've ever fucking heard another movie i love <laughs> <laughs> where did you fucking pull that oh my god that was the image that, was that popped in my head super obscure reference of the night yeah no i was kind of thinking of like in my head it was more like the uh like fucking the little mermaid chick going into like the cavern of the Ursula Witch, where it was like the eels and shit. It's like that <laughs> seeping in my room. Ugh. It's much more aggressive. I mean, dude, dude but, these are horrible shits. All right, let's get out of here. All right. 
We'll call it that one. We'll see about uh, coming back for another one. Maybe. Who knows we'll what see. happens. But, anyway, thanks for uh, joining us for another last call. Thank you, Tristan, as always, for joining me. Thanks to Big Asian Baby Jay for coming to tell us about his family life over in North Korea. No more hero. Oh, no. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you all next time the next last call. Team Money out! <laughs> <laughs> Like I tried it like I think about six months ago. It's like, hey, Tuaka, man, I think I should try a shot of that. It's like vanilla mixed with hatred. Yeah, <laughs> that is that is very. And it was like if someone mixed vanilla with a punch to the dick. It was like, how did I drink this so often when it's so vile? I wouldn't seek it out, but if somebody was like, hey, you want a shot of Tuaka? I'd be like, yeah, fuck hey, look, yeah, man. just for like yeah, nostalgia. That's, that's what he thought too. Right.